if we put you on the spot, when do you think there'll be no summer ice in the Arctic? Well, I think it will be in the summer of 2015, if you want a, uh, a single prediction, but it'll be sometime between uh, next year and a couple of years after. It's pretty clear from the, the death spiral, that's the way in which the, the volumes of ice in the summer are zeroing in towards uh, towards zero, that um, the ice can't last more than a couple more years. Can you summarise the effect of an ice-free Arctic on the world? Yes, the effect of an ice-free Arctic on the world is, is a very large one because it goes way beyond the Arctic itself. Because once the sea ice has disappeared, firstly uh, that produces a, a decrease in the global albedo, the amount of radiation reflected, uh, by the Earth and has a knock-on effect in the sense that the warmer air masses in the Arctic in summer cause a retreat of the snow line and the snow line decrease has just as big an effect on the albedo as the sea ice decrease has. So there's global albedo change which affects the temperature of the entire planet, it warms it all up. Uh, and then there's the fact that as the sea ice retreats it uh, allows the, the water masses around the shelves of the Arctic to warm up and that warms up the seabed and releases more methane from the uh, subsea permafrost which is melting away and that methane itself is a very very powerful greenhouse gas so we're having a methane kick uh, coming in from the retreat of the sea ice which again is a global effect rather than simply an Arctic effect there's a warming effect on nearby land masses because you, you now have a big open water area in, in the middle of the Arctic in summer giving you lots of evaporation warm air masses and those warmer air masses in the surrounding Arctic they not only cause snow line retreat and melting of permafrost on land but worst of all I think they, they cause increased melt rate of the Greenland ice sheet and the Greenland ice sheet is now melting over its entire surface during the summer and that gives you an enhanced volume of fresh water every year which will cause the uh, global sea level rise to accelerate and uh, I think that, that, that could mean that we have at least a metre of sea level rise this century, maybe two metres, whereas the previous predictions were for about 60 centimetres. If there was one positive, realistic action governments could take right now, what would it be? I think the, uh, the action that would be most useful as far as keeping industrial civilization going whilst reducing or eliminating carbon emissions would be to go nuclear, go really seriously nuclear, because it is the only way to keep the lights on and keep industry going and keep enough industry going to grow enough food for everybody on the planet because food is an industrial product now uh, and the only way to do that is is nuclear power and until and un unless we can develop fusion power that means fission and it means going for safe nuclear methods which do exist for instance thorium the thor thorium cycle is a very safe form of nuclear power and I'm just amazed that more people aren't, aren't going for that Thank you.